We need to know these for the first test as well as every test thereafter, right? So we need to make sure that we get this down. Now, um, we notice that there are eights and eights. Okay, so what about the eights and the eights? Eight is more, how much more? How much more is eight than an eight? One more, right? I ate one more oxygen, or Katia was saying, light, I'm one light on oxygen. Okay, so either way to remember that. Well, there's some other patterns that we would want to put to the periodic table. And we talked about those eights and nights, but we know that the eight is one more than the eight, but I'm like, oh, it's hard to know chlorate, got to know the number of oxygen and the charge. So chlorate has three oxygens, but phosphate has four and three minus charge, but that's a minus one. So how are you going to keep all that straight? How are you going to get all the eights and the charges correct? Well, that's where we want to use the periodic table to help us. Okay, does everybody recognize periodic table on this one? Yeah, okay, so do you see that this is the noble gases, right? So noble gases are not going to be polyatomic ions, right? Okay, now the first two are blank because fluorine is very, very active, so we don't have a polyatomic ion with that one. And then that other 6A is blank because that's oxygen, and we're talking about polyatomic ions with oxygen, not just oxygen by itself. Does that make sense? Okay, so noble gases are blank, and those two are blank. And then we have that stair-step line, right, because we're talking about the anions. So anions are going to be above that. So do you see where we are on the periodic table with that? Okay, so this one is the number of oxygen atoms in the eights. Now, does anybody see a pattern? What's the pattern with the number of oxygen atoms? What's that pattern in the first section? For one, there's threes and fours, right? Okay, Caitlin, what did we side? Okay, does everybody see that? Where are all the threes? The threes are on top and the side. So they're on the outside, aren't they? So the threes are on the outside. And where does that put the fours? In the middle. Okay, so threes are on the outside, fours in the middle. Okay, so that's the pattern, right? Okay, so if we were to look at a periodic table, and I said, okay, how many, think of where sulfur is. Okay, on the periodic table, you know where sulfur is, right? Okay, does everybody know where sulfur is on the periodic table? Is that column 6A, right? Okay, so if you were looking on the periodic table then, and we remember that the threes are on the outside and the fours are in the middle, I bet you could tell me how many, let's get a periodic table up there. All right, let's just see. All right, so sulfate, how many oxygen atoms? Four, because it's in the middle, right? Sulfate has four oxygen atoms. How about phosphate? Four. Arsenate? Selenate. See that? They're all in the middle here. Okay, now let's go across the top and the sides. How about nitrate? Does everybody see it's three? Because it's across the top. Carbonate? Three oxygen atoms. Chlorate? Three oxygen atoms. How about bromate? Three. Iodate? Three. Does everybody see that? Okay, so now you told me all the number of oxygen atoms of all those polyatomic ions. And you know eight is one more than eight, right? Okay, so does that help us remember which, how many oxygen atoms we're talking about here? Okay, so remember, along the top and the sides here are three, and the ones right in here, here's that stair-step line, so the ones right in the middle are going to be the fours. Make sense? Okay, now the other thing we have to know are the charges. Okay, how are we going to know the charges? Well, let's look again at this chart. All right, so here's where we have the charges. You guys see the pattern with the charges? What's the pattern? What's the pattern in the charges? There's a pattern. Do you guys see it? What is it? Okay, so we got it goes in order, right? It goes down and then Okay, so does everybody see where he's by the noble gases? It starts with the ones and then it counts over? 
Okay, except for the first two. Remember, we leave these blank so that slides over. Okay, so you just count them off, the charges. Now, let's think back to the halogens. Remember column 7A with the halogens? Now, chloride, bromide, let's think of the monatomic anions. Just the monatomic, not polyatomic. Let's just think of the monatomic anions. Chloride, bromide, iodide. Do you remember what is the charge of all those monatomic ions in the halogen column? You guys remember? Is it negative one? Yeah, and then 6A was how much? What's the charge of 6A? Negative two. And 5A was? Negative three. You guys remember those charges? We have to remember the charges with these polyatomic ions or with the monatomic ions as well. Okay, so remember what group 1A was? You guys all remember? Just kind of review that real quick. What's group 1A? What's the charge of group 1A? Plus one. Group 2A? Plus two. And then we have group 3A? Plus three, right? Okay, and then you remember that little diagonal, silver, zinc, and aluminum? Yeah, plus one is silver, zinc is plus two, and aluminum is plus three. Remember those monatomic ions? All right, so let's think back to the halogens. Minus one with the monatomic ions. Well, all the halogens have a minus one charge, right? Okay, so now let's think of the polyatomic ions. Well, here's our polyatomic ions. The eights and the eights have the same charge. So what is the charge of all the polyatomic ions with the halogens? Negative one, it's always minus one. It doesn't matter what kind of halogen we're talking about or in what kind of polyatomic ion. It's all minus one. So since you already know the halogens are minus one, can we remember that the polyatomic ions are also minus one? Yeah, does that make sense? They're all minus one. Okay, well, let's talk about sulfur. What's the sulfide monatomic ion? We said, oh yeah, 6A, sulfur was what? You remember sulfide was a minus 2. Well, guess what sulfate is? Minus 2. Sulfite? It's all minus 2? It is. And since you already know that column, this will help you. Okay, same thing with our phosphorus. Okay, phosphide is a minus 3, so is phosphate. Now here's the part where we do need to be careful. Um, this first row slides over to, so nitride is a three minus, isn't it? But nitrate is minus one. Does everybody see that difference? Okay, so that first row slides over to, and then you count one, two, three. Okay, does that help? Does that make polyatomic ions a little bit easier to understand? All right, so here, this chart is one where you have both of them on here. So um, chlorate is ClO3 minus 1, and then so on, bromate, iodate, so on. Okay, so this kind of helps you put those two charts together. Now, this is for the eights, but you know what the eights are. Eights are one oxygen less, right? Okay, so that's our pattern to the periodic table. So what do we think? Does that help? Does that make it a little bit easier? Okay, so keep your periodic table handy when you are learning your polyatomic ions and trying to tie that to that because you'll always have the periodic table with, on, the, on the exam. So you'll be able to look and see what those charges are. Yeah? All right, so that's one pattern. That covers a lot of them. But with the halogens, we have another pattern. All right, we have chlorate and chloride. We already said that. Chlorate was ClO3 and chloride was one less. Okay, so we have that pattern. But we can also go one more than chlorate. Well, we've already changed the ending, so now what are we going to do is we're going to add a prefix. So perchlorate. Now, if you go the other way, Chloride is one less, but if you go one less than chloride, you're at hypochlorite. That's not hydro, it's hypo, hypo. And you can think of hypo, the prefix only has one O in it, so that'll help you remember it only has one oxygen in it, okay? Maybe that'll help you remember. All right, so you see the pattern, hypochlorite, then it goes chlorite, then it goes chlorate, then it goes perchlorate. Okay, so here are the rest of them. See if you can fill it in following that same pattern. Okay, take just a minute, write them in on your PowerPoints, fill it in. 
So if you know one set of halogens, can't you get the rest of them? How many of them are there right here? What, 12 of these? So if you memorize the first set, isn't the rest of them the same? So now you only need to memorize four out of the 12, right? You can figure out the rest. And what do we think? Do we got it? Does everybody got it? All right, let's go over it and see if we're right. Okay, so what did we get for BRO minus? What did we decide? Hypobromite. And then what? Bromite. Very good. The next one? Bromate. Next one? Perbromate. You see how it follows the same pattern? And then we go again. What is what is IO minus? Hypoiodite. Yeah, hypoiodite. And then we go to iodite. And then one more is iodate. I ate one more oxygen. Okay, and the last one? Periodate. All right, easy, right? So easy. All right, so, so far we've talked about the eights and the eights. We've talked about the charges and the number of oxygens on the periodic table, right? Okay, and now we've talked about all those with the rest of the halogens. Okay, there's a couple other patterns. Now, we can't put all of it to a pattern, but there is another pattern that we can take care of, and let's talk about that one. All right, so if we know that this is carbonate, CO3, 2 minus, that's carbonate, and then I add a hydrogen ion, okay, that's a positively charged hydrogen ion, comes along, what's going to happen to the charge? I have a 2 minus, and here comes the hydrogen ion. So that means my charge now is what? Negative 1. Okay, so let's write that down. That would be HCO3 minus 1. Now, how do we name that? Well, what did we just add to that? We said this is called the what? Hydrogen ion. Okay, and this was carbonate. So if we put them together, we call it hydrogen carbonate. Ta-da! There you go. That's it. Hydrogen carbonate. All right, let's do another one. Let's do sulfate. That's SO4, 2 minus. Here comes the hydrogen ion. So now we have what? HSO4. What's the charge? Minus. minus. And what are you going to call it? Hydrogen sulfate. That's it. Okay, make sense? Okay, and then let's do phosphate, PO4, 3 minus. And if I put a hydrogen ion with it, then it becomes HPO4 what? Yeah, there you go, 2 minus. So what are we going to call this? Hydrogen phosphate. That's it. There you go. Okay, now there is an older term that we can put with the hydrogens. We can call this bisulfate instead of hydrogen sulfate. So yeah, we call it hydrogen sulfate. But another common term is bisulfate. This is like this, hydrogen sulfate, so it's bisulfate. So on occasion, we can do that. Um, well, let's take a look further at the phosphate. All right, so we've got a hydrogen phosphate with a 2 minus charge. Well, if I put another hydrogen ion with it, what happens to my charge now? It's just going to be negative, right? Okay, so, but how many hydrogens have I added? Two, so it's H2PO4 minus, perfect. And you would call this, how many hydrogens do you have now? Two, so that's dihydrogen phosphate. That's it. So if you know phosphate, you could get these, couldn't you? You just add a hydrogen ion to it, and then you, you can get the charge, and then, all right, is that... Does that make it a little bit easier to help you memorize these? Okay, good. So we're gonna, so we've talked about those. So we've found a pattern to this many of them. There are some that we don't have a pattern to. You'll just have to remember those on flashcards. We've talked about mercury before. Um, acetate, I do wanna draw your attention. There are two ways that we can write it. It's the same formula. We just write it out a little bit more to see who's bonded to who. The second way is usually what organic chemists want to do because it means something to us. 
but we do need to be familiar with either one. Most of the time it'll be the C2H3O2, but you do need to be able to recognize that. Okay? okay.